Hello students. Today we are going to learn how to understand a reading text better by making inferences. Now it is very important for you to make inferences when you read a difficult text. A text can be difficult in many ways. Sometimes the context may be difficult to grasp because of its theme. But most times it is difficult to understand because of the words used. Now you will find that to understand an academic text, you will be faced with two main challenges. Now the first one is to identify the subject matter. And the second is to understand the words and phrases used. Before you begin to fully understand an academic reading text, you will need to identify the keywords that will give clues to the subject matter. For example, if you're reading a text titled The Rise of Substance Abused Amongst Malaysian Teenagers. Now, you may not fully grasp the meaning of substance in a specific context, but upon seeing the word abuse, you may get some ideas what it is about. It may also help greatly if a simple and small visual accompanies the text. For example, a picture of a syringe and a bong, if you are familiar with the images accompanying the topic of drug abuse in the mass media, you would immediately know that a syringe is an instrument used to inject liquefied drugs, whereas a bong is an apparatus used to smoke cannabis, a plant which drug originated from. Now, these are two most associated items with drug taking. However, Upon further reading, you may also encounter the word alcohol, cough syrup, prescription pills, and even vape. Without reading the text thoroughly, you would have formed some ideas that these key words represent the topic of substance abuse. Now, before we go further on the topic of substance abuse, let's look at the definition of making inferences when reading. Now, when reading any particular text, you choose the most likely explanation at hand together with educated guesses based on supporting evidence from the text. Figure 1 and Figure 2 best explains the basic ideas of making inferences. The explanation which follow will further elaborate the importance of making inferences when reading any text. Now, when reading a particularly difficult text, try to construct meaning from the text using logical assumptions based upon clues from the text with prior knowledge and experience, as well as your personal beliefs. Now, through creative visualizing and intelligent predicting, you will be able to draw a logical conclusion of what the text is all about. Now, you could even formulate standard questions when reading a difficult text using the usual questions, which begin with WH questions, for example. You ask yourself, what is this text about? What are the important things I must know from the text? Who are the readers this text is meant for? Why is this text important for the readers? What new knowledge can I gain from this text? Now, let's look at the step-by-step -step process on how to make inferences on a reading text. Look at image two. Now, in the course of our program, we will be looking at reading at three different types of text in order to better comprehend both theme and topic. The subject of substance abuse is a very relevant subject at present. Perhaps over 50 years ago in Malaysia, this subject would not be of grave concern to the public, especially to the parents and authorities. But in this day and age, as we have become a more cosmopolitan society, we, and especially the young people, are also in danger of being exposed to readily available illegal substances like drugs and fake prescription pills. Now, the first text we will be reading is based on the true story. You will find that it had been highlighted in yellow and red. The statements highlighted in yellow are perhaps statements which will raise questions in your head and also quite difficult to comprehend. 
The statements highlighted in red are easier to grasp in meaning and help justify or explain the statements in red. Personally, I find it easier to understand a text about a clinical subject such as substance abuse if it is written in the form of a personal story. As you read it, it will be like reading somebody's confession of past mistakes and blunders. The sincerity and the openness in the way it is written will make it easier for you to understand and empathize with the writer's inner demons and conflicts. Look at image three, a personal story of addiction. I cannot tell you my name or where I live or even the specialty within which I practice medicine. I cannot do so for high, I, I have been shamed, embarrassed, and at times stigmatized. Even today, years later, I fear retribution, liability, and even prosecution. However, this is a story of hope, of support, and of recovery. I share this intimate tale so that you will learn from past mistakes and not take the path I have taken. My drug use did not begin until medical school. I was never a drinker in high school or even in college, nor did I use drugs socially. Then one evening, when I was finding it hard to stay awake to study for an organic chemistry exam, a friend directed me to some stimulants that were available in sample form. The result was perfect. I began using the pills rather innocently whenever I needed a boost. I soon learned that I could order the pills on the internet and have a supply whenever it was needed. Upon graduation, I entered practice determined to be the best doctor possible. I spent a great deal of time with my patients who kept coming back. My patient load grew exponentially and I had trouble keeping pace. I was working long hours and was unable to juggle the growing load. I found myself taking more and more pills just to keep up and then even more pills to get me to sleep again. I gave little thought to this drug use. After all, I was no street junkie making con covert deals in dark alleys. I was a good doctor with many patients using my medical knowledge to make the path towards success a bit smoother. So I thought, my drug, drug use escalated. In addition to internet orders, I would write prescriptions in the names of my family members. I was out of control, but getting by taking many pills to get through each day. Throughout this time, I still felt on top. Despite my drug use, I was a physician with a thriving practice. I had a wife and children that relied upon me and saw me as a great provider. My friends and family admired me. I was respected in the community. I enjoyed my status and felt it was deserved having achieved academically as well as socially since childhood. And then one day, the drug enforcement officer came to the door inquiring about fraudulent prescriptions. The reality of the situation took months to sink in. My reaction was disbelief. I was sure the entire misunderstanding would be cleared up with a smile and an apology. I could not have been more wrong. The shame and magnitude of my tumble was immeasurable. Not only did I face the legal and professional ramifications of having written improper prescriptions, but I had to cope with the personal humiliation of a fall from grace. I was no longer the icon of success I had worked a lifetime to achieve. I was now tainted, not only in the eyes of my colleagues, but also for the very first time in my own. Now, this is text one, and I hope you have enjoyed uh, listening to the story written, a personal narration from a doctor. Now, as the initial step in understanding the text which I've just uh, read to you, a reader could form signpost questions. For example, ask yourself, who is the narrator in the public eye? What caused him to descend into addiction? How does he feel about his grave mistake? Now, by asking yourself these questions, it would help you to scheme for answers, as well as establishing some important facts about the narrator. 
Another set of skills which is synonymous with reading comprehension is to scheme and scan. Now, if we were to refer to image 2, we know that applying the skills of scheming and scanning on the text enhances the ability to make inferences. Thus, a reader's understanding of the text becomes clearer and deeper. However, a reader still needs to check his or her understanding of the difficult words in the text so as to ensure a correct understanding of the main and supporting points. Now, this could be done through checking for meanings with the dictionary from time to time. Now, the next text is an article about the consequences of addiction to prescription drugs. Now, text two, I'm going to read to you text two. The consequences of addiction go far beyond things like strained relationships and health risks. In fact, studies show how addiction leads to all sorts of unsavoury consequences. The addiction epidemic remains the root of the crisis with no meaningful end in sight. Even in 2010, well before the opioid epidemic, the US Department of Housing and Urban Development reported that more than half of the homeless population was either in the throes of addiction, mentally ill or both. Now, addiction leads to serious long-term effects, including organ damage and weakened immunity. In addition to the numerous mental health issues that spring up as a result of long-term drug addiction, there are also a number of issues affecting the physical health of the individual who is abusing drugs over a sustained period of time. Now, according to the National Institute of Drug Abuse, NIDA, long-term drug abuse can affect, firstly, kidneys. Now, the, ki the human kidney can be damaged both directly and indirectly by habitual drug use over a period of many years. Abusing certain, certain substances can cause dehydration, muscle breakdown, and increased body temperature, all of which contribute to kidney damage over time. Now, kidney failure is not uncommon among long-term users of heroin, MDMA, ketamine, and other dangerous drugs. Now, second organ is the liver. Liver failure is a well-known consequence of alcoholism, but it also can occur with individuals using opioids, steroids, inhalants, or DXM habitually over many years. Now, the liver is important for clearing toxins from the bloodstream, and chronic substance abuse can overwork this vital organ, leading to damage from chronic inflammation, scarring, tissue necrosis, and even cancer in some instances. Now, the liver may be even more at risk when multiple substances are used in combination. Next is the heart. Many drugs have the potential to cause cardiovascular issues, which can range from increased heart rate and blood pressure to aberrant cardiac rhythm and myocardial infarction. Injection drug users are also at risk of collapsed veins and bacterial infections in the bloodstream or heart. Next organ is the lungs. The respiratory system can suffer damage related to smoking or inhaling drugs such as marijuana and crack cocaine. In addition to this kind of direct damage, drugs can slow a person's breathing, such as heroin or prescription opioids can cause serious complications to the user. Now, tolerance is dangerous and it causes the individual to use more and more of a drug in order to achieve the desired euphoric or stimulated state. Now, this puts the individual at an elevated risk for overdose and even death. In addition, tolerance to pain medications can have debilitating effects later in life. Now, homelessness is one of the consequences of addiction in a big way. In fact, 68% of addicts end up homeless at some point in their addic addiction. More than 60% of addicts eventually have a criminal conviction. As a result, many addicts that end up in prison will find themselves turning into career criminals with untreated addictions. This is your second text. Now, for the above text, readers may need to have a dictionary on the side, physically or digitally, as there are a number of medical terms which is content-specified. Or the medical descriptions are highlighted in red. 
No, the reader will need to use the dictionary to look up for meanings for some words such as trolls or chronic inflammation as well as making inference on what the text messages are about. Now, if we were to compare text 1 and text 2, you will find that the nature of the text also influences our understanding of them. The first text is a first-person first narrative. Due to the purpose of such a narrative is to create empathy as well as foster a certain kind of understanding with the reader. Therefore, the text becomes easier to understand. The text 2, the text is content-specific. An article which detail on the consequences of drug addiction. Even the first statement has established that in text 2. The consequences of addiction go far beyond things like strained relationships and health risks. Signpost questions then, which a reader can formulate, could look like this. Ask yourself as you are reading, what are the consequences of addiction? Why, why are such addiction dangerous? How do addicts become addicted? These are the signpost questions that you, you can ask yourself. For the next text, a reader will need to fully comprehend the text before managing to attempt what is required for the text. The reading text is an article about the dangers of vaping. That will be our third text. Now, as six, seven sentences have been removed from the article. Choose from the sentences A to G, the one which fits each gap. There is one extra sentence which you need not use. Vaping among teens. Vaping devices are popular among teens and are now the most commonly used form of nicotine among youth in the United States. Now, some research shows that many teens do not even realize that vaping cartridges contain nicotine and assume the pods contain only flavoring. they are easy to hide from teachers and parents because they do not leave behind the stench of tobacco cigarettes and are often disguised as flash drives. Further, a study of high school students found that one in four teens reported using e-cigarettes for dripping. Teens reported the following reasons for dripping. To create thicker vapour, to improve flavours, and to produce a stronger throat heat. A pleasurable feeling that the vapour creates when it causes the throat to contract. More research is needed on the risk of this practice. Now, in addition to the unknown health effects, early evidence suggests that vaping might serve as an introductory product for preteens and teens who then go on to use other nicotine products, including cigarettes, which are known to cause disease and premature death. Now, another study supports these findings, showing that high school students who used e-cigarettes in the last month were about seven times more likely to report that they smoked cigarettes when asked approximately six months later, as compared to students who said they didn't use e-cigarettes. Students who said they smoked cigarettes were no more likely to report use of e-cigarettes when asked approximately six months later. Like the previous study, these results suggest that teens using e-cigarettes are at a greater risk for smoking cigarettes in the future. Another study has shown that association between e-cigarette smoking and progression to smoking actual cigarettes. Additionally, a study of adult smokers in Europe found those who vaped nicotine were less likely to have stopped smoking than those who did not. In a 
another study of more than 800 people who say they vape to help them quit traditional cigarette smoking. Only 9% reported having quit when asked a year later. However, more research is still needed to understand if experimenting with e-cigarettes leads to regular use of smokable tobacco. You may have to read this text more than twice in order to be able to fill in the gaps. Now, the key to find the correct statements to fill in the gap is again to make inferences and to ask yourself the signpost questions, as well as scheming and scanning for main points and supporting details. Now, example of signpost questions for this text, you can ask yourself, what is vaping and how is it used? Now, and how different is it from actual smoking? What are the dangers of vaping or is it more dangerous than smoking? You will find the answers for the gaps in this text in our next segment where you need to choose the correct statements for the correct order of the gaps. For this segment, you will be given a set of four multiple choice questions based on text 1 and text 2 to test your understanding of both texts. Answer questions 1 and 2 based on text 1. Now, question 1. Why is the narrator confident that he will not be prosecuted by the authorities? Is it A, he's very careful about his drug taking and he did not consider these pills as hardcore drugs? Or is it B, he is an exemplary figure of the society, a doctor, hence prescribing a cocktail of drugs is a standard practice in the medical profession? Or C, he has a strong and reliable connections with important members of the society, which include the authorities and politicians. Now, the correct answer is B, because the narrator, being a doctor, is confident that his profession and practice will not rouse suspicion among the authorities. Question 2. What were the narrator's feelings once he was caught by the Drug Enforcement Agency? Is it A, a feeling of anger and resentment as he did not expect to be caught by the law enforcement? Or B, a feeling of relief and humility as he had descended so far into drug addiction and was desperate for help? Or C, a feeling of humiliation and disbelief as he thought he could e evade the authorities? The correct answer is C, because the narrator was too confident, but now he has to face the consequences of his actions, which include punishment from both the authorities and the public. Now, answer questions three and four based on text two. Question three, what are the two serious consequences to drug addiction? Find the most suitable answer. Is it A, a compromised state of health and well-being, as well as declining socio-economic status, or B, becoming a drug addict and a criminal and later going to prison for it, or C, a declining health and a disintegrating social status? Now, all three answers are correct in terms of content, but answer A better define the message within the text and feature a more academic description of the details. Your next question, why do some serious drug addicts survive fatality while some young addicts do not? Is it A, because serious drug addicts know the kind of drugs that their body can tolerate? Or B, because serious drug addicts have developed tolerance to the drugs they are taking? Or C, because young addicts' body are still vulnerable to drugs? Now, the most correct answer to the question above is B, serious addicts due to long-term drug taking have developed a tolerance to the drugs. However, that does not mean they are invincible to the dangerous consequences of drug addiction. In time, they will develop chronic diseases and declining mental state before succumbing to their death in their 40s or 50s. Now for text 3, the correct answers to the gaps are as follows. First gap, the easy availability of these devices, alluring advertisements, various e-liquid flavours and belief that they are safer than cigarettes have helped make them appealing to this age group. Two, 
A is a practice in which people produce and inhale vapors by placing e-liquid drops directly onto heated atomizer coils. And three, a study showed that students who had used e-cigarettes by the time they started ninth grade were more likely than others to start smoking cigarettes and other smokable tobacco products within the next year. And four, notably, the reverse was not true. Five, the study suggests that vaping nicotine might actually encourage cigarette smoking in adolescents. And six, those who use e-cigarettes also smoke more cigarettes than those who didn't. Seven, while it's true that e-cigarette aerosol doesn't include all the contaminants in tobacco smoke, it still isn't safe. And the number seven statement is a statement which is not meant for, it, for this text. Although the topic within the statement is relevant, the clue is in the term used. Instead of the term vaping, the term e-cigarette is used, and clearly it is not the term used for this particular text. Now we have come to the end of our lesson today. So what have we learned so far? We learned that making inferences is vital when attempting to better understand a text. It also requires us to use the facts presented and the prior knowledge we have in order to make educated and intelligent guesses about the content as well as the statements within the text so as to better understand a particular reading text. We have also learned from the text use the dangers of substance abuse in the form of drugs, illegal prescription, alcohol and vaping. Now hopefully, you will take home with you not only the skills of making inferences as well as scheming and scanning, but perhaps more importantly, the knowledge of substance abuse, a pertinent social issues in Malaysia today. Thank you and all the best. Goodbye.